Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with Grammy Award-winning jazz legend Joe Lovano with the Trio Tapestry on 2021's Garden of Expression. This new CD out on ECM Records was recorded in Europe in November of 2019 and features Marilyn Crispel and Carmen Castaldi. The music he writes for this group is melodic, and it's rhythmically free and full of spirituality. It's great music, and it's done as a collective in such a great environment. We also touch on the COVID world and hope for the future as we move forward. Enjoy. How's life been? I know we spoke, we had a unique opportunity to speak around April during the beginning of this pandemic, and now we flash forward to a new year and new things. How have you been doing? <laughs> well, I haven't, I haven't been on the road all year. That's the, you know, the main thing, like not, uh, playing for any audiences. My last gigs uh, were March 13th and 14th last year, just right around this time. It was at the Keystone Corner in Baltimore for two nights. Really, on the 15th is today, right? That's when everything kind of shut down, you know? So, you know, I've been doing a lot of different live streaming events and different things, you know, writing a lot of music and uh, vibrating on tonalities. But I haven't been able to go visit my family in Cleveland. Really, the last time I was out there was December of uh, 2019. So, yeah, you know, it's been different uh, not being able to uh, really go out and do things the way you usually do, the way you live your life, you know. But uh, I'm... Been doing a lot of Zoom teaching. You know, I have the Gary Burton Chair in Jazz Performance at Berklee College of Music. I teach within the Global Jazz Institute with Danilo Perez and John Patitucci and Terry Lynn Carrington. And uh, we've been meeting um, all our students in forum moments, uh, like master class type moments with gatherings on Zoom, and then uh, one-on-one with folks. And that's been really rewarding and, and really amazing to get next to people like that. You know, it's different. But we have students all over the world. So I have, I have uh, people in Seoul, Korea, and Australia, and France, and Italy, and uh, I have one percussion student in Cyprus. Greece and Spain, you know, it's so it's, yeah, it's a different kind of uh, a challenge for them, especially not to play together, you know, in ensemble settings. They're playing more virtual recording projects. So it's a different kind of focus, but it's it's really been strong and positive. Well, your latest album, Garden of Expression, which is a wonderful album, it almost seems as though we've gotten to a point where releasing an album now is one of the only and best things that jazz musicians can do to stay in front of the fans. Well, you know, I mean, these live streaming events have been really good. Like around New York City, like um, I've done a few from the Village Vanguard stage. No audiences, you know, just a, a few folks running the cameras and documenting us. Also, I've done something from the Blue Note Club and Birdland where you reach an international audience, you know. Now, it depends on the platform and the way they market these live streams uh, so people really know what's going on, you know. That's been real, real incredible, man, to uh, to play with a studio kind of uh, uh, atmosphere, more or less, you know, like in the, on the Village Vanguard stage, to use the room as a venue with a studio-type atmosphere. So, you know, I've been doing, like, through composed sets and playing um, like we're doing a a recording session, you know? But yet it's for a live stream video. So that's been real different, and I think something that in the future is going to be a part of the whole world of music that we live in are some of these live streaming events that you create in a studio atmosphere that you can reach your audience now releasing of course uh, releasing
releasing a, a, a recording like my Garden of Expression on ECM Records. That was recorded in November of 2019. We were on a tour in Europe, and we played in Lugano for the radio uh, station there. The, the, they have a beautiful sound studio and stage, a recital hall, where we played a concert the night before, and Manfred Ucker from ECM, he loves this space, and he uses it a lot to record. But we had a chance to play a concert the night before for a full audience and feel that room. And uh, when we went in the next morning, we were very comfortable in that space. And we just kind of reconfigured on stage and we played uh, as a trio uh, in a real beautiful way, you know, because we were comfortable in the room. I was really happy to have documented that in November of 2019 it was due to be released and uh it just happened now that it came out now uh, this january february of 2021 there's been a lot of things that you've mentioned that are new about the world of chess right now because of this pandemic and my question is how are these things that have been new how are they going to strengthen the world of jazz how is the world of jazz going to come out stronger when we do actually get back on the stage hopefully the music is going to be stronger because musicians are going to have a lot of time to practice and play and develop ideas. So this is a real soul-searching moment and a very defining moment in our history. In this period of not going on tour and really focusing on who you are and uh, where you stand on the scene, the international jazz scene, I'm speaking. I think like uh, a lot of the music is is going to get a little deeper and maybe more spiritual, hopefully, not just uh, commercial, but uh, personal. And that's what I'm reaching for in my music. I'm using this time to really reflect and develop some ideas about improvising and playing together with people. And you could hear on my trio tapestry the, these last two recordings a direction and a, an approach that is developing all the time and uh, in a very peaceful way also. Not uh, not to be aggressive and play with a, with an attitude of... Uh, to play with a, with a peaceful attitude in your tone and your sound and the way you communicate with your fellow musicians and uh, the way you can communicate to your audience, you know? So I'm, you know, I'm, that's that's what I'm hoping for, you know, because there's a lot of amazing uh, music out here and some real virtuosic players, but they're all everybody to me seems to be playing with a real aggressive attitude. It's boring after a while, you know. I want to hear people like dig a little deeper, get inside some soulful music, you know. Yeah. And uh, those are the kind of folks I want to play with and that I've always strived to play with throughout my career. With the, the vaccines and and everywhere on the planet has to be really uh, going in the right direction for us to get back to any kind of touring schedule like that we had going. 2019, for me, was an amazing year of touring. With my, my trio tapestry, my group Us Five playing Charlie Parker, also, I toured with Diana Krall uh, as a guest soloist with her quartet all summer and in the fall in 2019. I was on the road a lot, and uh, then all of a sudden, 2020 was just like phew, nothing. Yeah. On the, you know, just uh, and and so you know to get back to that kind of touring, it's going to take. A, a while for this to really unravel internationally. Well, I guess that's my next question. You mentioned vaccines and things are starting to wake up. I know things are starting to happen. What do you see for a timeline, even for yourself, to kind of get back into a live setting and see things kind of advance and vaccines and all that? My next concert that's booked is August 1st at the Newport Jazz Festival. If they go with a with an audience. I'm not sure if they're going to go virtual or what's going to happen, but at this point, 
looking for August 1st to possibly play in Newport with the trio. And then I have some dates in Europe from like September, October, November that are all tentative at this point, but they're, the promoters are starting to look into uh, hoping to present some music. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm supposed to play with Chucho Valdez in Paris maybe in November 22nd, that happens that's that's something that's on the books right now but we have to see how this all unravels now throughout the summer and into the fall i'm getting my second dose of the vaccine my wife judy and i on uh, march 25th so i'm going to feel a lot more you know optimistic and hopeful and uh but everybody but it, a lot of things have to come together for, for something like that to happen. Yeah, you know, I'm looking really into 2022 possibly to get back to some some kind of touring uh, schedule maybe. But we'll have to see, you know, those tours I did in 2019, I mean, with Diana Krall, we played something like 30 concerts in like, you know, 35 days. Nighters everywhere, all over Europe, you know. I mean, yeah. things like that, I'm not sure when that kind of touring is going to happen again. Yeah. For a while. You know, where where you're really going, you know, you're flying every day somewhere new and uh, dealing with hotels and transportations and sound checks and uh, all of that, you know. Uh, we'll We'll see, you know. But uh, I want to emerge from this moment with a whole body of new works that I present. Yeah. When we do return, when you get back on stage and we get back in the crowd, what do you hope we all realize about live music when we get back, Silver Linings? Well, I think like the, everyone has to, and I'm sure everyone does, realize the blessings of the world of music that we live in. And uh, we're all a part of it, listeners and players alike, you know. Uh, when I play with any of my groups or, you know, in certain bands that taught me about that congregation, of the congregation of the players on stage, whether you're playing with a large band or uh, duets and trios, you know, you're a congregation. And then the audience is part of that con congregation. It's like, that's why, you know, you always speak about the, ch the church, you know, and the preacher, you know, and uh, the vibrations that happen in, in the church. And uh, that's such deep roots in, about jazz and about this music and, the, and our culture, you know, and uh, around the world. You know, those congregations of folks, are po it's a powerful moment, you know. Hopefully people are going to really re realize more and more the power of that, you know. And that's why when we play, sometimes you might play in a small club for 40 people or, or less. Sometimes you might play for, you know, 5,000 people in, a, in a, an arena-type setting. It's like all the same. It's all one. That's the yeah. that's the beauty of music because because it's some spiritual uh, music that happens, it takes over. You know, yeah. especially if you're playing jazz and it's not just a show. It's a, it's right. about really digging deep and, and finding some some new music together as a band. You know, and as individual players. Right on, man. Joe, thank you for, for taking some time out. Thank you for the new music and good luck with the return to the stage and with the new album. Well, thank you. And I really appreciate, uh, like everybody, like, uh, just relaxing and, and enjoying the sounds and feelings that, uh, that we're trying to express. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview. We'll give you a bit of insight into the finest legends in New York, Kansas City, and spots all over the world, giving fans all that jazz. And thanks again to Joe for joining us and giving us his wisdom and his music. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino in the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. 
Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.